Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be tasting Gorgonzola. So this Gorgonzola I made on the 9th of January 2022. It's now 19th of March. Uh, so it has been aging for, what's that, two and a half months, give or take a few days. So two and a half months, so what's that, eight, ten, ten weeks, about ten weeks-ish. So that's about right, so it's between eight and ten weeks um, for Gorgonzola to mature. Uh, so this is Gorgonzola uh, Dolce, which is the sweet version, not the stronger, harder, drier Gorgonzola Picante. Uh, so just to get that difference um, straight off the bat, um, this is the Gorgonzola Dolce. So let's open it up, have a look. A little bit of moisture on top of the ripening box, but hey, that's normal for ripening boxes. We'll just put that, where are we gonna put that? Put that there. Okay, put that tea towel there. And it's got a little bit of white and blue mold and it's starting to see the mold soften the outside of the paste, which is a good thing. So it does smell a little bit of ammonia, but that's normal every week when I take it out and turn it over. Uh, I've got clean hands, by the way. I did sanitize them before I started the video. So let's just take that off of the mat. Starting to, um, you see the mat there, starting to get a little bit of, um, it's not orange mold, some people say it's a brevi bacteria linens, but it's not. It's the breaking down of the uh, the penicillium broke 40. So it's a little bit sticky. So what we can do, we can clean that up. But before I clean it up, I need to check the insides. Now, I've never done this on a video before. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use my trust, trusty, tr trusty, my trusty cheese trier. So what this does, it takes a core from uh, up to the center. So I need to go to the center. So it's about to there. So what's that? It's uh, two thirds along. And we'll get a core and see if there is indeed vein development within the Gorgonzola. So what's the best way to show it? Probably like this. So we're going to push it in to where we think we need to go and we give it a turn and of course that is in the way and we gently pull it out and we can see that there is some vein development on the inside and the paste let's just try a little bit of it that's why it's called a trier mmm Oh, that's beautiful. Messy hands, but because we haven't done anything with the outside. That is absolutely delightful. Mm. Oh, goodness. No, no need to plug that up. I will. I'll just... No, I won't. Mm. Oh, that is so good. That's almost like the stuff you get out of the packet, but better. Huh. Oh, let's make a little ball of it. Mmm. Right, let's clean it up. That's, I've done the taste test now, let's go home. <laughs> Just tricking. Okay, so I'll clean that up with my um, ripening box. So let's just, I need to spray my hands a little bit with some vinegar. It's just white vinegar in the spray bottle. Just cleans up the hands a bit better. And there we go, much cleaner. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off uh, the blue moulds of the oh, on the outside, so the cheese is more presentable. There's not much to scrape off, just a little bit. What I could have done to help age this cheese a little better, not that it's not aged better, that you know, I straight from the horse's mouth. Just wipe it on the towel, it's a bit yucky. A 
This is the easiest way I've found to do this. If you're going to do it at all, you could just simply eat it with all the blue on, but I find that this scraping method, nice and simple. You could reuse some of that Penicillium Roke 40 if you wanted to. Um, I had never have because, you know, you just use the fresh stuff straight out of the freezer. Seems to work for me. Now, the Penicillium Roke 40 mold I used was a strong version that we have on the website at Little Green Workshops. Now, if you wanted even a milder flavour, which you could do, you could use the, there's a, a mild version of the Penicillium Roke 40. Now, if that plug of uh, cheese that I pulled out with the trier uh, hadn't have been hadn't had the right uh, veining, then I could have waited a bit longer. So put the plug straight back in again, or the end of the plug anyway, and um, could have put that back in and put it back in the ripening box, and we could mature it longer. So. So the best way to store this um, now that it's mature is in the kitchen fridge in aluminium foil. If you've got it, uh, just the normal kitchen variety seems to work fine. It allows the cheese to breathe still and uh, it will slow down the maturation process because it's in the fridge at 4 degrees Celsius. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. Or in Australia, we call it pretty schmick. All right, we're going to cut it open in a minute. Hold your horses. <laughs> oh, lovely. All righty. So all that mold is going into the bin. Cutting my finger off. I'll clean that up. Right, so just to fold that over, pop it into the bin. It's going to smell a little bit. I've still got some on my hands, so I'll just get, get rid of that now. Tea towel, that's perfect. And I'm going to use a little bit of um, paper towel to just clean up a little bit more so they do this is what they do they clean it all up that's why it looks really good when it's uh, packaged up because they get rid of all this stuff right done all right so let's, let's clean up my hands. A little bit of vinegar because that seems to work the best. Righty-o. So we're now going to cut into it and see it in its all its glory. Now it's all cleaned up, it's presentable. Um, just so I'm using a lot of paper towel. This is recycled paper towel, by the way, from it says on the packet office paper. So they've made a paper towel, so it's not virgin trees. So I'm using as much as I like. Alrighty, so let's cut into it. Let's see what it tastes like. Even though we've had a try already using the trier. Alrighty, nice cut. Oh, yes. Oh, very good. So, perfect. There's a big gash in the middle. That was me. It took a bit out. Anyway, you can see there we've got some nice veining. It's a bit subtle, but that's perfect. All the piercing I did worked fine. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Um, and we've got some lovely, let's just cut it in half. Some lovely veining throughout the cheese. Very light. But remember, this is a light sort of cheese. So, as in, 
uh, the, the Gorgonzola Dolce being a sweet cheese. It's in sweet in, in the blue versions anyway. So the paste is, let's have a look. Just pull that off the knife. So the paste is not as elastic as some cheeses. It does break, that's good. There's subtle Penicillium Rogue 40 all the way through the post paste. The good thing is uh, it's not a very firm paste. There's lots of air pockets for the Penicillium Rogue 40 to grow in, which is absolutely what we want with this style of cheese, which is why it wasn't pressed. Most blue cheeses don't get pressed. Oh. Oh. That's a cheese gasm if I ever saw one. Oh my goodness, that is delightful. So it's soft and it's smooth, so I can squeeze it between my fingers and it makes a paste, a form of paste as I heat it up. Yep, that works. So yeah, you could spread it a little bit, but my goodness, the flavor is outstanding. It's one of those creamier, milder cheeses that you get, a milder blue cheeses. Certainly nowhere as strong as a Stilton, nowhere as strong as mm, the uh, Shropshire. Uh, so on the milder side, as it's supposed to be, it's on the creamy side, similar to Castle Blue, um, but not as strong as, as that one. That one was a little bit stronger. Uh, but certainly creamy, oh, it is delicious. So yeah, Gorgonzola, Dolce, perfect cheese. Mm. Can't say much more than that, that if you wanna make a nice blue cheese, it was fairly simple to make. Just follow all the instructions in the videos and you won't have too much trouble. So if you wanna pick up the kit for this, you could use the blue cheese kit that we've got in stock at Little Green Workshops. Also, if you wanna get the cheese trier, um, we've got lots of these in stock. So pop over, have a look at that. Um, it is perfect for checking the consistency of uh, blue cheeses like this. Also fantastic for looking at the flavor profile of long aged cheddars um, to, to get an idea of whether it's ready, uh, whether it's mature, whether it's a little bit bitter still and can use longer aging without having to cut the cheese open. So absolutely perfect, great little tool. So the cheese trier uh, or cheese iron, it's known in some countries as well. Perfect little tool uh, for testing the inside of your blue cheeses. Okay, that's me for today. Thank you very much, Curd Nerds. For watching this, I've really enjoyed presenting Gorgonzola Dolce to you, uh, the taste test anyway. Um, it is a delightful blue cheese. If you're into blue cheeses, um, then this is absolutely perfect cheese to make for the home cheese maker. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed and want to get more cheesy content like this, then hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell to be notified when I release more cheesy content. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.